Welcome to worship here at our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Avon, Indiana. I am Pastor Matt, and it is the ninth Sunday after Pentecost, and we're going to be celebrating uh, St. Lydia this Sunday and really celebrate um, her life and what she did as a saint, but we're going to especially focus in on how she became a saint and what happened thereafter. With that, brothers and sisters, let us continue with the opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us now take a moment of silence to reflect upon our sins. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and it is for his sake that he has forgiven you all of your sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the word, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of of all, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O blessed Lord, you are hidden in things simple and ordinary, but your grace is never anything less than miraculous. Grant to us grace that we recognize your hand of blessing, supplying us all that we need for this body and life and for our eternal salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and teach us to receive them with gratitude and peace in our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 16. So, setting sail from Traos, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate uh, to the riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods, and was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized, and her household as well, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our epistle reading for today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 9. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. But it is not as though the word of God has failed. For not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel. And not all are children of Abraham, because they are his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said. About this time next year I will return, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only so, but also then Rebekah had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac. Though they were not yet born and had done nothing either good nor bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of him who calls, she was told, the older will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides the women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. It's time for the children's message. And we read uh, about St. Lydia. She was a woman uh, who converted from uh, being a a Jew to to a Christian. And it is a beautiful reminder uh, of how that happened. If we remember, it was St. Paul who was preaching and teaching on the beach. And who heard? Who heard the gospel? It was Lydia. And she accepted it in her heart. In fact, she was baptized and her family was baptized and they were saved. But let's back up. How did Lydia come to the faith? Think about it. Think about it. How did she come to faith? Because she heard the word. She heard the word being preached and taught by Paul. And that word came into the heart of Lydia, and she believed. 
God called her into the kingdom of God, into the family. And I want to remind each and every one of you that in your baptism, that's when God called you. He called you into his family, just as he called St. Lydia into his family when the word of God came to you in your baptism. When you're baptized in the name of the, can you say it with me? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's when God entered you and made you his child. So I, I want you to, to go out today and just remember who you are in Christ, that your sins have been forgiven and that you are now a child of God because of the word. And if you don't know Christ yet, you can find him here in his word. And you too can be called into the family of God and to the blessedness of love and forgiveness and eternal life. Will you pray with me? Say, dear Jesus, I thank you for making me a child of God. Thank you for calling me in my baptism when the word of God was spoken over me. Amen. Blessings. We'll see you later. At this time, we continue with the sermon hymn. Grace and peace be to you all from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has called us all into his marvelous light. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate St. Lydia. And not necessarily do I want to focus on, on her life, it, but we will for a, touch on a couple things that she did. But I really want to focus and zero in 
on her conversion. And that's really where the pivotal point of the story begins. Because it's after that that she begins to work for the kingdom of God. And it's, it's amazing what she does. And so we're going to go through the text. And then I want to um, connect us to a, uh, another text in Romans uh, chapter 10 that really fits the heart of why it's so important that we celebrate St. Lydia because it shows the power of the word. And I have a story to begin to kind of show this, this, this idea. I remember watching uh, at a park. I, I already had, well, in fact, that's when our kids were still babies. I say kids in that we only had two at the time. <laughs> we're blessed with four now. But uh, we just had uh, Isaac and Levi, and we're still in a little stroller, and you know, couldn't leave them. But I witnessed something that was very, very interesting. So there was these kids playing soccer, and one kid was being yelled at. And so he went, and, and he, he kind of had this very, you know, sad face, and he kind of went over and, and sat down and uh, began to cry because they're all yelling at him, get over here, you big baby. And, and you know, they're really just making fun of him. And, they, and these were like maybe third graders, you know. So, you know, former teacher in me wants to go over there and <laughs> do my thing. Uh, but vocation as daddy prevailed. But I watched, and I was very sad for that kid. And in fact, I had every intention of going over there uh, once, once Tracy had gotten back. She was off uh, getting something in a store, but all of a sudden, a kid, I, I don't even know where he came from. Well, he wasn't playing soccer, but he, he walked over, didn't yell, didn't call many names. He just reached his hand down. And now I could not hear what was going on, but I saw their lips moving, and he grabbed his hand and helped him up. And he kind of was using gestures and talking to him. And then he walked him into the group of the kids playing soccer. And then the most amazing thing happened. They all kind of shook their heads like this. And then he was on a team and the other kid joined another team and they started playing. And it was as if nothing ever happened. And I, and I use this story to prove the point. When those kids were yelling, what happened? He, he sat down and, and he was totally turned off. He was, he was excluded, right? But what, what changed his heart? And in fact, what, what changed the heart of the entire uh, group of kids? And I think it was that act of love and that act of mercy that was shown by this, this kid that came out of nowhere and, and he came and he created peace. And it was all because of love. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I think that is the heart of the story that we read in Acts. So let us go to the scripture. So the conversion of Lydia happens like this. On the Sabbath day, we went, uh, Paul, uh, and probably Luke, but they go, supposing there was a place of prayer, and, and they sat down and they spoke to the women who had already gathered there that morning, okay? And they started preaching and teaching about Jesus Christ. One who heard was a woman named, you guessed it, Lydia. And she was a seller of purple goods, um, which means she probably had some money, okay? She was probably very well off because it's very hard to make purple at that time. You had to collect a certain kind of shell and you had to crush it. And that's how you got purple in ancient times. So she probably was well off. Um, but she was a worshiper of God, more uh, specifically Yahweh. And so she was, she was a Jew. But when she heard Jesus Christ proclaimed, she completely changed. 
Just like in the story of that kid who completely changed, and the group of kids completely changed, Lydia here is completely changed. And, and how is that possible? And here we see it is the Word. The power of the Word, of the Gospel, of Christ in this situation is so evident. Not only was she baptized, but her family was baptized. This is the power of the Word, friends. And I think it is something we take for granted, maybe forget. But it is quite literally a miracle that we believe in God. Because without the Holy Spirit, without the Word of God, who gave us the Spirit in our baptism, we would not be able to declare Jesus Christ as Lord. So God, just as he came to us, we see God coming to Lydia. How? Same way he still does today, through his word. Because they were teaching and they were preaching on the, on the beach with them in the prayer time, and, and it, it says that she heard, very closely related to the same kind of idea of she believed. So... What does change a heart then to become one that is concerned about others, one that is concerned about love and forgiveness and grace? It is the Word. The Word changes hearts. In fact, it's the only thing that can truly change a person's heart. The Word of God. Not only is it that powerful because God is found here in his word but that's how powerful love is that it can really strike to the center of someone an act of grace goes much farther than an act of anger and we see that all over in society but today we are reminded that it is the power of the word that can reach a person's heart and create faith in them. And so with this in mind, I want to take us to Romans uh, 10. And I want to read because it is so beautifully written here that connects to exactly what St. Lydia and why we celebrate St. Lydia today it's because we are reminded of the power of the Word of God, just like we talked about. So listen to this, Romans 10, 8. But what does it say? The Word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the Word of faith that we proclaim. So proclaim, there's the speaking, the proclaiming of the Word. And so what does it do? Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And the only way that's possible is what? If we hear the word. The word creates faith so that we can do this, declare Jesus as Lord. For with a heart one believes and is justified, and with a mouth one confesses and is saved. The scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And of course we know what must come first before we can even call upon him is he coming to us. And that's exactly what we see in the story of Lydia. And now... Lastly, I read, and this is speaking directly to us today. Just as it did to the early church, it is still just as important for us to hear this. And so I continue to read here. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? In other words, how are people going to hear and believe? Well, and how are they to believe in him whom they have never heard. See what's going on here yet? <laughs> and how are they to hear without someone preaching? 
and how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. <laughs> Friends in Christ, that's you and that's me. We have been called by the power of the word of God, just like Lydia was as we read. And just as Romans has reminded us, how will they hear? How will they believe if we don't speak? So go. Go in love. Go emboldened by the power of the Holy Spirit that has been laid upon you in your baptism, that is laid upon you every time you come to the Word. May it strengthen you. May it be your guide so that you can be the spokesperson for Christ. So those who have not heard may hear. For those who have never seen may see Christ in you. So they too can be part of our family. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Let us continue by confessing the one true faith together, using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this time, we would normally collect our offering. And so I would just invite uh, everyone to continue to give as you have been, whether it's by your envelopes or uh, online electronically. We give thanks for all of your gifts. And specifically uh, today, we just want to uh, thank you for giving because it's really helping our Shepherd Lutheran Church and school, uh, specifically the school, prepare for this, this new year. It's going to look very different uh, than the beginning of last year uh, because of the COVID-19. But because of your generosity, we're able to purchase things that we normally wouldn't purchase, uh, we'd get things ready and just be fully supported and not only just financially but with all your prayers and support and volunteering i'm just filled with that I, I, I can see that love and i'm filled with joy to see everyone come together and, and make sure that when those kids walk through that front door they will be greeted in the name of christ and they will be safe so thank you for all your faithful giving we continue the prayers of the church Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy Lord, grant your wisdom and heavenly grace to all pastors and, and to those who hold office in your church that by their devoted services, faith may abound and your kingdom increase. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you would send the light of your truth into all the earth. Raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel both at home and in distant lands. 
remind us of where our faith comes from. It comes from you alone, O Lord, from your word. Just like St. Lydia was given faith through the word, we too have been given faith through the word. Strengthen us, embolden us to go out and share that good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Take from us all hatred or prejudice we might have. Give us a spirit of love and order our days in peace. Prosper the labor of those who work to bring peace and justice to the nations of the world, that mutual understanding and, and the common endeavor may be increased among all peoples and nations to have peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray that as the beginning of the school year approaches quickly, that you would bless our school here at Our Shepherd and all schools. Please grant your wisdom in such measure that people may serve you honorably and that our common life may be conformed to the ways of your truth, which is only found in your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our family here at Our Shepherd, and we lift up these names to you that have been brought forward to us. We pray for Amy, Cheryl, Katie, Dorothy, Virginia, T, Joe, Margie, and John. Please, Father, answer their prayers according to your good and gracious will. Father, we also pray for all who mourn. We continually pray for the family and friends of Liz T. Meyer. Please grant them that peace that is beyond all understanding. May they always remember the resurrection to come. We pray for all missionaries, Father, and all persecuted Christians. Embolden their faith, and may they be able to stand their ground and fight the good fight. Father, we pray for all those who are in prison. May they have a chance to repent and hear and believe in the gospel. May you send them someone to preach the word to them, just as you did for St. Lydia, so that way their hearts could be changed, just as hers was. Father, we also pray for our, our active military members. We pray for Corey Jr., Dominic, Caitlin, Dylan, and Rex. Please, Father, protect them and bring them home safe. We now, at this time, have a moment of silence so that you may hear the prayers of your people. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord live his countenance upon you all and give you his peace. Amen. We continue with our closing hymn, Almighty Father, bless the word.
Thank you for joining us for worship here at Our Shepherd. I pray that the word that was proclaimed and taught uh, would be a blessing to you and your family, that you may grow closer not only to God, but to one another, always remembering that the word of God has power to change our hearts so that we can go out and change the hearts of others. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Amen.